Hi, um, I'm Vija and a master's student at the University of Glasgow. Um, I'm just working on my dissertation proposal, which is on the idea of consciousness and how that interacts with AI and intelligent machines and all of that. Um, so I've been really interested in talking about phenomenal consciousness for a while now. Um, and that's basically the highlight of this talk. Um, okay, so first of all, um, I think it's really important that we define how we're perceiving the idea of consciousness. Um, the overall concept is that, that there is something it is like to be someone or some animal or anything. So there, um, but there are different aspects of consciousness. Um, there's wakeful consciousness, there is self-awareness, self-consciousness, and there's access and phenomenal consciousness, which I'm going to discriminate and talk about more. Um, but from here on, I'll be talking about whether it is possible for intelligent machines to have any level of consciousness um, and why it could be possible that they could have this consciousness. Um, all right. So the hard problem, as David Chalmers has put it, is um, that you know, there's a gap between explaining how physical processes uh, can give rise to subjective experience. We do know that science is objective um, and that consciousness is subjective. We're having experiences of, or we feel things, we feel pain, we have the experience of um, watching a sunset, um, things like that. Um, now, when I talk about access consciousness, it is more like having access to certain parts of a system, um, having access to information to these parts of the system. And I think that that is very possible in artificial intelligence, it's already been done. And um, so access consciousness is not the mystery here, the mystery is the phenomenal consciousness bit. And I think that this is why philosophy is important in this area, because science is able to do something to an extent to the objective part of it. But if we are to assume that consciousness is to feel something or to have the subjective feels or what it is likeness, um, then there must be something it is like to be the intelligent machine. And well, is, if it is so, then how do we reach it? How do we understand what that could be? Um, so again, I'll be talking about the cognitive AI um, here and again, asking the question whether if this is possible, this level of consciousness. Um, so as I said before that it is, you know, assumed that it is possible for the machines to have the access consciousness. Um, although we don't know if it can ever evolve into a stage of phenomenal consciousness or self-awareness later. Um, let me just put this forward. Um, all right, so currently we do not intelligent machines are able to do a certain level of tasks. Um, the very recent DALI 2 as developed by OpenAI create um, realistic images, just an art and everything just from mere descriptions given to it in natural languages. Um, again, this is just an example, um, a bowl of soup that is a portal to another dimension as digital art and it has been able to create this simply out of just this message. So we do know that intelligent machines at this point are able to create things, but the difference between our level of consciousness or what makes us um, a different kind of intelligence in them is that when we create things, we do, we are aware of this, we're aware of the authenticity, we're aware of us creating it. But when we think of what it is like to be the machine that creates something like this, I don't think it understands that it, do, I don't think it has the concept of self identity. And so these are the gaps that need to be bridged. Um, again, now I think I'm going to move on to Chalmers um, simulation hypothesis. I think this whole thing has been a little inspired by his new book, Reality Plus, um, which I've been reading since it came out, I think, very recently. Um, and so what he says is that um, 
if it is possible, I mean, we do know that um, when we have certain experiences like like um, looking at a color or feeling pain or anything, there are certain areas of the brain that light up. Um, and these can be correlated and be made into certain systems, right? So um, at this point, what we're gonna be, I mean, we are doing in cognitive AI is replicating this behavior that, or the brain processes that we're undergoing and trying to see if that is, you know, going to work well with the AI um, intelligence. So what Chalmers says is that um, it is possible to simulate our minds um, and create the exact neural blueprint of how our brain works. Suppose we take a person X and simulate X's mind entirely and do this, um, like, not all at once, maybe like day by day, doing like a part of it every single day and building up to it. Um, so it's going to be the exact thing. So, and if, if this is possible, if we're able to do this, um, the question is, does the machine behave or work exactly like X does? Um, and then he goes on here to talk about his eight from bit hypothesis, where he says that the bits are just merely the fundamental pieces which make up the whole system where in the case of AI we've got the algorithms um, and I'm, I'm not going to be dwelling too much onto this because I'm still in the initial phases of my research um, but yes yeah, so again um, the questions of whether AI can be conscious like us again I think this just targets the skeptical problem of other minds where for a long time I think philosophers and people, everybody, I mean, they were not even aware or not even fully accepting that other animals were conscious. But now I think there's everyone's like reached a stage wherein um, we have accepted the consciousness of animals um, to a certain extent. And I mean, there's always going to be a skeptical question about um, is anybody else or anything else actually conscious apart from ourselves. Um, and so if we just look at it in a different way. I mean, I think it is very possible for this sort of consciousness to arise in AI. I think the only gap that, gap that needs to be bridged is how do we reach, how do we understand this phenomenon consciousness? Access consciousness is possible. Um, and so like also again, like I was talking about the DAL E2 um, machine. Um, so Chalmers says that, you know, just as creativity is in magic, consciousness is in magic, it arises in us due to certain physical processes. Um, so I don't think that there is any reason to think that it cannot also arise in AI, um, which can maybe replicate or implement similar, similar processes as us. Um, and yeah, again, like I was saying, we cannot fully understand phenomenal consciousness yet and are still on a journey to solve the hard problem. But I think that in searching for a way to replicate this human level understanding and task management, um, once I mean, we're able to create an access conscious AI. And perhaps when we're simulating through trauma simulation hypothesis, simulating brain processes through the neural networks, maybe this can benefit both um, the advancement of the AI research, but it could also at the same time, uh, maybe bring us one step closer to understanding consciousness, whether it truly exists, or I think that's it for now. Thank you very, very much. Uh, any questions? <laughs> All right. Okay. So I think what this question means is that what I would think would qualify for the AI to have consciousness in order, I mean, I think concept of self. Okay. Um, broadly speaking, I think that First of all, like a distinguish between the access and phenomenal. I think the access consciousness is what it is. It's possible the AI is able to distinguish and recognize and is able to perform tasks and in a rational way, especially all the AIs uh, that are currently existing, the ones that can play several games within a minute and 
can beat the game just i mean like humans probably wouldn't do in such a less time uh but in terms of this self-identity i think that when the ai or when we're talking about the dal e2 in particular um i'll just use it as an example i think that right now what it simply does is it takes the commands um given to it in terms of language and based i mean it i I've read a bit about this. It uses this diffusion technique wherein it forms um, patterns, dots of patterns, and then slowly it starts merging them together. And um, this kind of, once it reaches some sort of clarity of what's happening, it um, it forms together a particular piece of image or art or whatever, based on all the information that's already been given. So again, it's accessing set, like different areas of the information that it's gotten and then going on to create something out of it. But again, I think this uh, refers more to the Chinese room argument, wherein it's been given this sort of a code list or some sort of syntax or something, which it just, I don't think it truly understands what exactly it is doing. Um, I think it does this based on the algorithm or the syntax that it has been given or put into it. So I think what I mean by the concept of self is that if it were to reach a level where it would be creating things on its own of its own volition without it being given commands to do so, or it's creating something extremely abstract, different, but also if maybe it were given a command or asked to create something, if it were creating something entirely different from all the information that's been put into it. And it is also understanding that itself is the authentic creator of this, that I would give it some sort, some sort of like this self-identity. And also um, at some point, if it realizes that, you know, there is something it is like to be me who create things, then maybe that's some sort of phenomenal character that it you know, could have evolved into, um, maybe, yeah.